One of the basic and important transformations is that of rotation. Consider the following mapping. So we have a T from R2 to RT. So basically it's a transformation in a plane. And suppose it is a linear one with a given matrix 0, minus 1, 1, 0. So if you write down x in coordinate, then we get 0, minus 1, 1, 0 times x1, x2 equals minus x2 x1. So observe, we may observe several things here. First of all, look at the length of the transformed vector. So the, the norm of the vector tx. Well, it equals, of course, the square root of minus x2 squared, the first coordinate, and the second coordinate, x1 squared. But of course, this equals the square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared. And this is just the same as the length of x, or the norm of x. So actually, this operation that we have here, so this linear transformation, is length preserving. So what comes out is just as long as what we put in. So, secondly, we take an inner product, the dot product of Tx with the original vector x. So it's the dot product of uh, minus x2, x1 times x1, x2, which equals, of course, minus x2, x1 plus x1, x2. So this is zero. This holds for any vector x. So we have that uh, t of x is perpendicular to x. Yeah, so the vector t of x is orthogonal to the vector x. So if we here look at the picture on the left, we see that x is transformed in t of x minus x2, x1. Yeah, and you see that actually here we denote that it's perpendicular. Well, is this picture accurate? Well, it is in the sense that if um, x is in the first quadrant of the plane, which means that it has both positive coordinates, then t of x has a negative first coordinate and a positive second coordinate. So then tx is in the second quadrant. So what do we observe here? Actually, what we have shown is that T represents a transformation corresponding to a rotation over 90 degrees or a half pi, counterclockwise. So now we consider a rotation over an angle phi between 0 and a half pi, counterclockwise. Yeah, you see that here we have a vector x and we rotate it over an angle phi. And we have here y as the transformed vector x, which is rotated over half pi. So now we see that we actually can decompose t of x in two vectors, x prime and y prime, which are parallel to the vectors x and y respectively. Yeah, so t of x is the sum of two orthogonal components, x prime and y prime. Moreover, the cosinus of phi equals the length of x prime 
divided by the length of t of x. But as we know, well, you can clearly see that a rotation preserves the length. Later on, we're going to prove this more formally. So the length of x equals the length of tx. So the cosinus of phi is the length of x prime divided by x prime. Also what we have is that x prime is in the direction of x. It's parallel to x. So if we, if we normalize these vectors, they represent the same unit vector. And something similar holds for the vector y prime. If we divide it by its length, then since y prime is in the direction of y, we have that uh, y prime divided by its length equals y divided by its length, representing the same unit vector. Now we may combine things. Yeah, so we have that x prime equals, over here we use this relation, that x prime equals the length of x prime divided by the length of x times x. Which in turn equals the cosinus, here we use this relation, the second one, that it equals the cosinus of x. Similarly, we get with y prime is the length of y prime divided by the length of y divided uh, times the vector y, which is now not equal to the cosinus of phi, but the cosinus of a half pi minus phi. Yeah. So here we have the the other angle, complementary angle, and the cosinus of this angle is of course equal to the sinus of phi times y. Now we look at a, tr a rotation over an angle phi. So the transformation t that rotates any vector in the plane in R2 over an angle phi counterclockwise. So t of x, if you look at a picture on the left, you have t of x and y. Y is the, uh, the, the vector transformed over half pi counterclockwise. In between we find the vector t of x, which is a rotated vector x over phi counterclockwise. Well, t of x is the sum of two vectors. Yeah, um, the, the two orthogonal vectors x prime and y prime. And x prime is parallel to x and y prime is parallel to y. And like we've seen before, x prime equals the cosinus of phi times x. Also, we have that y prime equals the sinus of phi times y. Equals the sinus of phi, and y is the vector x rotated over 90 degrees, which has coordinates minus x, x1. And we also write x in coordinates x1 and x2. So again, minus x2, x1 is a vector x rotated over 90 degrees. Counterclockwise.
then we may rewrite t of x. t of x is the sum of x prime and y prime. And we use the descriptions that we found before. So now we have x prime equals the cosine is phi x1, x2. And y prime, we're going to substitute the expression above, equals the sinus of phi times minus x2, x1. So what we get here is a new vector. And if we write down the coordinates, we get as first coordinate co cosinus phi times x1 plus sinus phi minus x2 or cosinus phi x1 minus sinus phi x2. And the second coordinate equals the sinus of phi x1 plus the cosinus phi x2. Now we just change the order in which we mention the terms. So actually we can recognize now, what we recognize now is a matrix vector product. Well, the matrix is given by cosinus phi minus sinus phi, sinus phi cosinus phi. And the vector has coordinates x1, x2, which equals actually x. So what we get here is a matrix cosinus phi minus sinus phi, sinus phi cosinus phi times the vector x. And so we get a matrix here. A matrix multiplication, matrix factor product. So we may conclude that the rotation over an angle phi counterclockwise actually defines a linear transformation in R2 from R2 to R2. As it is represented, as it can be represented by a matrix vector product. And also note that if we look at this matrix, which we will call a rotation matrix, which is denoted R phi, R standing for rotation and phi over the angle counterclockwise then this matrix, and we just restate the matrix that we found before, well, is of a special type, because on the diagonal we have the same elements between minus 1 and 1, and on the other one, the other elements, sinus phi minus sinus phi, are of type B minus B. And we have that A squared plus B squared equals 1. Well, any matrix of this type is a rotation matrix.